What is up people, Teja here and in this video I'll be talking about JWT confusion attacks. For those of you who don't know what a JWT is, it stands for JSON Web Token and it's a way of doing token authentication in your web apps. So basically in token authentication, a user, whenever he's sending a request to the server, he includes something known as a token in the authorization header. So when the server receives this request, it's going to extract the authorization header which contains the token and it's going to check if this token is valid. And by doing so, it will be able to tell if the user is authenticated or if the user is allowed to perform that particular action. Now this is unlike the default authentication that most of the web apps use on the internet, which is session authentication. In session authentication, when a user logs in by giving his username and password, the server will create a session for that particular user and it will store this session information in its backend database and as the response to the login request it's going to give something known as a session id as a cookie value back to the user now this session id uniquely identifies the session that the server just created for that user so in all the subsequent requests the user will be sending this session ID value as a cookie to the server. And in this way, the server, when it receives these requests, it will extract the session ID from the cookies and it's going to see if this session ID belongs to any of the user sessions in the backend database. And if there's a match, it means that the user belongs to this session. And that's how the users stay authenticated. Now, the key difference between session authentication and token authentication is that in session authentication, the server needs to store the session information in its backend. But in token authentication, that can be eliminated. And JWTs do this very well. So here's how JWTs work. A JWT token contains three sections, header, payload, and signature. The header contains the cryptographic algorithm being used for signing the token and the token type. The payload section contains the actual data about the user like his username, his permissions, token expiry information, etc. If you are implementing JWTs on your web app, make sure that you do not include any sensitive details in the payload because everything in a JWT token can be decoded because it's just base64. Now, you might ask, if JWTs are stateless, which means the server does not store anything about these tokens on the backend, how can they be validated? I mean, what stops a user from spoofing his JWT token and making himself an administrator? This is where the signature part comes in. The header and the payload sections are first base64 encoded, then joined together with a dot, and the whole thing is hashed. Then this hash is signed using a key. The type of key used here depends on the algorithm being defined in the header section. There are essentially two types of algorithms, symmetric key algorithm and asymmetric key algorithm. In a symmetric key algorithm, the same key is used for both encryption and decryption. Whereas in the asymmetric key encryption, a private key is used for encrypting the hashed data and only the corresponding public key can be used for decrypting the hashed data. The confusion between implementing these two types of algorithms is the root cause for this confusion attack. For example, have a look at this code which has flawed implementation of JWT token validation. When a token is sent for verification, it first takes the algorithm in the header. If it is RS-256, which is an asymmetric key algorithm, it uses the public key for validation. That's fine. But if the algorithm is HS-256, which is a symmetric key algorithm, it still uses the public key for validation. What this means is that a user will be able to modify his JWT token, change the algorithm in the header from RS-256 to HS-256, give himself admin permissions by modifying the payload data, and then create a new signature by using the public key for encryption. And by the way, this public key is available for everyone to see because it's meant to be public. So when the server receives this spoofed token, it sees that the algorithm used is HS-256, so it uses the same public key that was used for signing the token to validate the token. And obviously, the validation will be successful because the algorithm is maliciously changed to symmetric key encryption. To be clear, the flaw here is that the developer wrote a generic verify function which attempts to verify the token in the same way no matter if the algorithm is RS-256 or HS-256. 
Without further ado, let's go ahead and exploit this JWT confusion attack. So here I have a port swigger lab. I'll make sure to leave the link to this in the description below so you can go ahead and try this out for yourself. And this looks like a blog and apparently it's vulnerable to the JWT confusion attack. So let's go ahead and try to exploit it. So I'll go to my account and it asks me to log in and we are actually given the credentials to log in. The username is Wiener and the password is Peter. Click on login and now I'm logged in. So if I go ahead and look at the cookies, I have one cookie named session, which looks like a JWT token. So I'll just copy this and to make sure that this is actually a JWT token, I'll go to JWT.io and there is a neat interface like this. So I just paste my token here and that's going to decode the JWT for me and I can see the data inside the token. So the first section is the header, which contains KID, which is I think the key ID and the algorithm that's being used, which in this case is RS-256. And as we discussed earlier, this is an asymmetric key algorithm, which means it has both a public key and a private key. The next section is the payload data itself and it has three fields or three claims. The first one is ISS, which is set to ports figure. The second one is the expiry. I think it is some timestamp value. And the third one is sub, which I think is the username of the current user. And finally, we have the signature. And currently, we cannot change this message and then re-sign it because we don't have access to the private key. And as you can see, the algorithm that's being used is RS-256, which means the signature is created with the private key and we don't have access to the private key. But we do have access to the public key because a public key is supposed to be public. And the common path where this public key exists is at slash jwks.json, I think. So if I go to the web apps root address followed by jwks.json, this is the public key. And the fact that this is exposed like this is not a vulnerability because a public key is supposed to be public. Anyway, so we have the public key with us, but we first need to convert this into .pem format. And in order to do this, I'll just copy this public key. And I have a Python script with me that does this. So this is actually created or generated by ChatGPT. It's a very simple script. It's making use of the JW crypto module and it's converting uh, the key, the public key into .pem format. So I'm going to replace this with my current key and I'll go ahead and execute this. Let's see Python three convert .py. And this is going to generate my public key in the PEM format. Now I want to save this to a file called key.pem. So let me do that. And let me try to open key.pem in sublime text. And there is one issue with this script is that it has an additional new line at the end like this. Now, when you're dealing with PEM format, it must always end with a single new line character. In this case, we have two new lines. So I'm going to remove the extra new line here and I'm going to save the file. And now this is a valid PEM format. So I have the public key in the PEM format now. So the next thing I want to do here is change this algorithm to HS256, which means I'm trying to force it to use the public key for encrypting the digital signature or for creating the digital signature. And if we are able to do that, it means we don't need the private key to re-sign our JSON web token. We can just modify the payload data as we want and then re-sign it with the public key, which we have, right? So that's what we're trying to do here. So in order to do that, you can use this really cool tool called JWT tool. I already have it on my machine, so I'll go to that and let me see python3 jwt tool.py and this is the tool let me do dash h for the help menu and let's see what we want to do so we want to exploit and the exploit type would be k which is the key confusion attack which is what we're trying to exploit and then we also want to modify these fields right we want to change sub from Wiener to administrator so that we will be treated as the administrator by the server. So in order to do that, we can make use of, let's see, PC, the PC flag. It says payload claim to tamper with. So the claim that we want to tamper with is called sub. So we can set sub as the PC and the PV is the payload value 
and this is this value. We want to change this to administrator. So we can set PV to administrator. And then finally, we also want to inject those claims to the existing JWT token so that, you know, the token will be modified and it will be re-signed with the key that we provide. And finally, we also need to provide our public key to actually sign that token. And we can do that by, let's see, uh, this option right here, PK, it accepts a public key and it will sign the uh, JWT with the public key for asymmetric algorithm. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll say Python 3 JWT tool. Let me make this big screen, JWT tool.py. And then first of all, I will give my existing JWT token, which is this. I'll copy paste it here. And then I want to inject the claim. So I'll say dash capital I. And the claim that I want to inject is sub. So I'll say dash PC sub. And then the value that I want to set is administrator. Make sure I spelled that correctly. Yep. So finally, I also need to give it the public key to sign it with. So I'll say dash PK key dot PEM. I think that's perfect. So let me go ahead and execute that command. And you can see it has now generated a new JWT token for me. So if I just, oh, sorry, if I just go ahead and copy this and put it back into JWT.io, you can now see that the sub has been changed from winner to administrator, which means our JWT has been modified and it is it has been re-signed. That's good news, right? So I'm gonna go back to my web application here and I'm gonna go to my session and I'm gonna replace the existing session with my newly created uh, JWT token. I'm gonna save this. Fingers crossed, let me go ahead and refresh this. Did not work. Um, not sure why that did not work. Oh. Actually, I think I messed up the command. I forgot to set the exploit type to confusion attack. And that is why you can see that it says right here that it ejected the token with an unchanged sig signature. So let me try this again. Python 3 JWT tool.py and then I'll give my JWT token here and I will set X, which is the exploit type to K, which means the confusion attack. So this is the, this is the flag that I missed in my previous command anyway so i'm gonna say dash i to inject new claims and the claim that i want to inject is called sub and the value that i want to set is administrator and then finally i also want to pass the public key which i want to use to sign the jwt which is key dot pem and i think this should be it let me hit enter and there you go. Now it says in the output that it has signed the JWT using the public key as the HMAC secret. And this is the public key that it used. So let me cross check this. I'll copy this JWT. I'll go back to JWT.io. I'll paste it here. And now you can see the algorithm has changed to HS256, which means it changed to symmetric key. And then the sub field has also changed to administrator. So I think this should be it. Let me go back to the web app and let me replace my existing JWT here with my newly created JWT. I'll save this, fingers crossed, I'll refresh it. And now if you can notice, I have something called as the admin panel. If I click on it, I'm now in the admin dashboard. And this basically means I am now being treated as an administrator. So I am able to impersonate an administrator on this site by spoofing my JWT token using the JWT confusion attack. How awesome is that, right? All right, so that will be all for this video. Thank you so much for watching this. If you did like this video and if you found this helpful, please do not forget to leave a thumbs up below and also do comment in the comment section below. If you're not yet a subscriber, please do hit that subscribe button and also turn on the bell icon to receive instant updates from my channel. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, cheers.